Welcome to the Holistic Health Show, where the worlds of science and spirituality converge to illuminate a path towards total well-being. Join us as we embark on a journey to bridge the gap between Western medicine and complementary therapies, offering you a roadmap to embrace a proactive, holistic approach to your health. It's time to empower yourself with choices that nurture your body, mind, and soul. Welcome to a world of infinite possibilities for your optimal health. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Holistic Health Show. Thanks again for joining us today. And today, joining us from Pakistan, we have Dr. Jawad Mustafa, and he's here to talk to us about breast health. So I'm very keen. I, you know, despite being a woman myself, I don't know much about the prevention of different illnesses and diseases that can manifest in the breast. So I'm excited to learn about this today. And I hope that everyone will get something really valuable from it. Thank you for joining Dr. Jawad Mustafa. Thank you for the opportunity. I'd love to have you just jump right in. Tell us a little bit about your professional background, if you don't mind. I'm Dr. Jawad. I have been practicing for about 17 years. After graduation, I did my MPhil in obstetrical and gynecological ultrasound and in my own clinical setup, our family setup. I've been doing providing clinical facilities uh, along with the diagnostic ultrasound facilities. And for as my major is in obstetrical and gynecological ultrasound, so for a few years, you can say particularly for two, three to four years, I've been more focusing on breast health, breast cancer awareness, along with diagnosis and offering special diagnostic ultrasound facility to increase the detection of any breast health issues, breast cancer. So that's why I've initiated my own breast cancer awareness campaign also, an organization. It is a non-funded organization. So our main objective is to promote breast health awareness to those who are not in the screened group because mostly women are screened after the age of 40 years by using mammograms and all that. But mm. this before this age, so 14 to 15 years of age till the 39 years of age, this age group is not mostly screened. So the purpose is to educate those females, those women, those young girls about methods and ways in which they can care for themselves, prevent themselves from breast cancer. But there are many other aspects of breast health. So mm. the main focus and objective is on awareness, guidance, and teaching them and coaching them effective ways so they can empower themselves so to reduce the risk factors for their later life. And I'm just thinking as you're talking there, you know, as a woman, I'm 37 now, and so I've never had a mammogram because I'm not... I'm not over 40 yet. So as far as I've been told by my GP is that I don't need to do that. And aside from, you know, you as and I'm sure I speak to many other women my age and, and perhaps younger, you know, you go and do your regular gynecological, gynecological checkups and you might have a really brief breast exam by your GP, your family doctor. But other than that, I am upon reflection. I don't think of, I can't recall any sort of, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever had any conversations really around breast health. And I have always just relied on, you know what, I'm not old enough yet. I don't have to have a mammogram. So I can, as someone who's quite into, you know, health and being very holistic about my health, I am a little ashamed to say that I, I don't think I've had any real breast health attention. So where would one start? And at what age should one be kind of bringing this to their attention? Okay, just a short question. Do you think mm. uh, cancer will wait for uh, a woman to be of 40 years? After that, the cancer will hit her? Absolutely. And I, it's interesting because I know women who have developed breast cancer at quite a young age, you know, and uh, I have learned to do self exams. So I have been across that. I mean, how skilled I am at that, I, I don't really don't know. But aside from really being told, do a self exam, and if you notice anything abnormal, like a hard lump, then everything else is kind of fine. So this is the whole thing. This is the whole concept uh, behind my this effort in this whole campaign. That there are so many aspects of breast health which nobody is talking about. Especially mm. the healthcare systems, they only talk about any disease process. They only entertain you when you are sick. They don't yeah. give you proper information, proper guidance 
regarding how you can reduce the risk factors, how you can adopt those changes which will not have, make you show up at our clinic. That's so right. This is the whole thing that if you are not in that particular age group, then there is no, you can say, no system to guide any female. You are in a holistic health, you can say, profession or you have this education regarding all this. But think of those billions of females who don't have this kind of access to healthcare facilities, healthcare information, mm -hmm. and particularly their own health. So yeah. for all those females, there is only two options available. Either their GP or their uh, gynae doc will examine them or they will get screening process after the age of 37 or 40 years, whatever is applicable in any country. So in this all time period, when a female starts to develop breast till she is in the age of the screening, in all this time, she is on her own. She has to learn on her own. She has to care for herself. She has to learn about all these things. And this she has to do besides all other obligations she has. So yeah. this is a very, you can say, alarming stuff. So mm -hmm. ideally, it should not be like this. It should be taught from the, uh, her teenage years as soon as she starts her menstrual cycle, as soon as mm -hmm. she starts breast development, she should have uh, awareness bit by bit, step by yeah. step. There should be a proper education and guidance system, coaching system in the colleges, in the universities, and also in their workplace. That according to their age, according to their daily lifestyle everybody has different lifestyle different genetic makeup different routine different diet different hormones everybody requires a different set of uh, self-care methods it is not like a one size fit all policy for everyone yeah. so everyone has to learn what is good for them what works for them without having to join any academy any sessions or all that it should be part of their routine and it can only be done if they are advised and guided right from their teenage so that mm. they are aware of all those risk factors till they hit, uh, they hit their um, uh, early 30s. They are already aware of what to do. Yeah. So this is the whole concept. And I'm even thinking back to, I went to school in Canada and in late elementary, we did sexual health and it touched on period health. Even that wasn't very extensive, and, but there was nothing on breast health, certainly. So I'm wondering, you know, what is it exactly that you are saying that we can do? Are you, have you prepared this sort of educational information or how is it you're, you're kind of introducing this now? Actually, I started this from my own clinic. For the past couple okay. of years, I have been educating and guiding all those females who either come to me for their breast examination or their ultrasound examination. So mm -hmm. their friends, their family members who accompany them or anybody who may have had uh, any breast issue in their family, I try to communicate with them, guide them about what went wrong in their case and what they can do for their own family how to educate right. them and guide them, give them basic steps. One thing that every GP, every healthcare facility, or you can say breast awareness campaign, especially in October, they mm. provide a false information that you have to check yourself by pressing. And if you find a lump, then you go to a doctor. They don't okay. tell you there are eight to 10 other symptoms also, which may lead yeah. to breast cancer. They don't tell you. They, nobody tells uh, this. So, what are they? For simply uh, the breast cancer the breast tissue starts right under the clavicle till the last part of the breast that is felt from sternum till the armpit area so in right. all this part starting from the skin any rash any mark any ulcer that is not healing it can be a sign mm. of cancer any nipple discharge any cracked nipple which is not healing it can be a sign of cancer any okay. discharge which is without squeezing the nipple any spontaneous discharge can be a sign of cancer. Not mm. particularly cancer. It can be due to a lump. It can be due to a hormonal anomaly that may lead to cancer. Okay. Right. From there onwards, in the ducts and the glands, if there is any hardness, if there is any burning sensation, any part of the breast that feels different or that feels stiffer than other part of the breast, 
it's the same breast but the other areas of the breast if it is stiffer if it is tender it can be a sign of cancer same goes mm-hmm. for any lump but it, it doesn't have to be a you can say big lump any small right. lump even the smaller lumps the cancer tries to grow itself gradually so mm-hmm. most gps and most doctors they educate that if you feel a lump if it is mobile then you don't have to worry it can be a fibroid noma this is a total wrong concept in a in a small lump which is growing which has not achieved or which which has not attached itself to the deeper tissue or skin it will be mobile so how can we differentiate by simply palpating it that it is uh, non cancerous you just you don't have to worry wait till it grows bigger when it grows mm. bigger it is already stage 3 that it has traveled to the lymph nodes so I... these concepts we have to educate and guide every female that it is not just about finding a lump you have to notice if there is any change if she starts to feel difference in the shape size color of skin of both breast or nipples if she starts to feel one breast is constantly heavier if one part of the breast is constantly aching there is a burning sensation can be a sign of any disease mm. there is no thing that healthy breast and cancer breast there are multiple things that fall in between these lines and these categories there can be cysts there can be hormonal issues there can be fibrocystic changes there can be nodules there can be papillomas there are multiple things so just labeling two or three conditions and leaving everything aside this is a totally wrong approach by yeah. the healthcare system healthcare professional and even the worst thing is even on the month of october when it is celebrated to be awareness month only awareness given is check yourself go to doctor there is yeah, no it middle is. thing between this so this mm-hmm. is totally wrong thing that we are doing and this practice is leading us towards a global and you can say pandemic of breast disease and breast cancer that every one in eight female is at risk this wow. is a global issue and these numbers are increasing just because of negligence and improper mm-hmm. information and would you say that there are any specific groups of people who are more susceptible to a breast cancer or breast disease yes or is it kind uh, of across there are uh, genetic factors there are basically two kind of factors that are linked with uh, formation or development of breast cancer one set of factors is the non modifiable those which we cannot control any female even men can have breast cancer but their number yeah. is reduced very less but they can have cancer so there is one set that is non modifiable that uh, a female doesn't have control of and the other is the modifiable ones so having a tendency at the white race the white women they are more at risk later uh, after this there is a, a tendency for the uh, dark skin females to have breast cancer asians mm. hispanics they all then, then there is you can say a bit less but the detection in a young female whether she is from any race it is having an increased risk of aggressive cancer like in right. the 20s i have seen females in their early 20s of having breast cancer and mm. just because everybody told them that this cancer doesn't happen in young age they yeah. ignored that and when they were diagnosed it was stage 3 stage 4 so the progression is rapid as they ignore it secondly <clears throat> they are not caring for it about the diet about their self care those factors that are increasing the cancer cells progression and the growth so it is very important that any female who feels any kind of symptom any sign symptom or if she has family history or she has she tested positive in her genes brca1 or 2 so those are at high risk every female should have access to all the necessary information and if mm. she is at a higher risk then she should adopt those changes which are required for her to reduce the risk factors the avoidable risk factors absolutely and then i'm i'm happy that you mentioned because i know you know in just speaking with my friend groups and things like this that a lot of men are still very broadly unaware that men can actually develop breast cancer as well i know that well i mean i i think i know that it's not as common as it is in women but is should men be adopting the same approach to breast health 
actually it is the risk factors for females they are defined cause they are mostly linked with estrogen levels estrogen okay. dominance excessive amount or excessive period of time in which estrogen had effect on the breast glands and ducts so right. if a female starts her menstrual cycle before the age of 12 years and she didn't get her first pregnancy or she didn't breastfeed till the age of 30 or 35 years this whole gap of this 20 years of uncontrolled unrestricted effect of estrogen on the body on the glands and the ducts of breast this increases her risk factor because estrogen not only promotes ductal we can say tendency to have breast cancer it also has effect on the mutation of the cells which can lead to cancer formation so all these factors they are more in females in men right. there is estrogen present it can have an effect but it is mostly linked with either genetic tendency or radiation exposure or toxins and carcinogens so the basic thing for any male any person if there is growth in the breast tissue right under the areola right under the nipple if it starts to feel heavier any lump formation it is painful or any discharge so it can be a sign of breast cancer in men i have seen a couple mm. of those cases but mostly it is prevalent in females Right. so in united states you can say about 1 in 850 or 900 person is a male person is having breast cancer but the okay. risk for female is 1 in 8 no thank you thank you for sharing that all right so what i'm hearing is you know women from a very young age need to be given the resources and the education but also learn how to become more body aware you know it, it is it is about doing some of those you know those self exams but also about having access to other information and, and knowing what you know kind of warning signs or symptoms to look out for so how often should a woman be doing a breast self exam and i guess i want to also highlight what you said about the exam needs to kind of extend on a much broader area on the woman's body than than just the breast themselves but rather you know the area surrounding the breast the armpits and like you said on underneath, underneath the clavicles But yeah, how often should a woman be performing these exams provided they are having no other symptoms, no pain, no discharge? Okay, so any healthy female, let's suppose 13 to 14 year old teenager, she should start the basic visual examination. There are two aspects of examination. One is the visual one, one is the palpation one. So visual examination can be done on daily basis like like she combs her hair she washes her face and sees any kind of skin change or anything like that any mark any scar any pigmentation any difference in size there can be a minimal difference in size shape or color but if the difference is increasing if the one side feels more heavier so it can be examined on daily basis the visual examination right. it doesn't take much time one mm. minute on a daily basis or alternate day whatever she is feel comfortable with so yeah. right from her teenage she can do it till her 80s and 90s whatever life span yeah. she has she can do that on daily basis so i mean it's really just when you're getting a shower or you're getting dressed having a look in the mirror and noticing yourself like i said being body aware and yes you know and and not being then i mean I, it would be concerning and you would feel worried but not to be so become so overwhelmed that you know you don't seek the help then because you're so worried about something being wrong but certainly by noticing that and if you're at that young age you know confiding in a parent or you know a close relative that you know you feel like you can trust in to, to get them to help you you know kind of get that help and reach out to those those GPs or you know whomever it may be and it really speaks to ensuring that at from a very young age you you have a close and comfortable relationship with your doctor because 13 and 14 year old girls i mean i mean right up until you're in your 20s you're shy and you feel funny about your body and it's all new and it's really important to have an open and honest and comfortable relationship with your parents certainly or you know your trusted relative and and your doctor because it, it is a bit of a a funny conversation to have when you you know you've all of a sudden you're developing breasts and you don't know what they're supposed to look or feel like and then you notice something that might be wrong with them so i'm sure is, that can be a very uncomfortable situation this is the exact thing that i'm trying to point out that if she is in a habit of daily examining herself she knows what is normal for her 
and right at that moment if she feels after 2 3 years or whatever time she feels there is something different in any skin area if she palpates now the other misconception and the wrong information provided is about the examination method everybody tells you have to examine in the circular manner and mm. just by doing this or pressing if you feel anything that it is a lump or anything like that it is it is a wrong concept there are three methods to palpate and okay. every female should learn how to palpate properly because mm-hmm. while let's just to put an example i often give this example there are a bunch of straws if you see them in the front view you will only see five tubes small right. five small circles but unless you trace it back unless you see this view you will see there are long straws the same right. thing is if there is a duct block any uh, breast duct that is blocked it will be painful it will if she presses it it will feel like it is a small nodule but unless mm. she traces back she will not know either it is a tubular structure or a round structure so right. the same thing is she has to do three kind of exam every female first is by the circular motion all parts starting from the clavicle going round till the armpit area then the second is by line method going up and down same way pressing it so she doesn't miss any part and the third is the wedge method like 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock so because okay. the ducts they are, they fan out like from the nipple area or area to the outer, outer area so unless she is examining all the parts in the way they are situated like in the, the umbrella the hold the pins of the umbrella and all that they are the all circulating in you can say circular manner but we are only checking them in a radial method or one method we will not be able to properly examine that if yeah. she is having any kind of lump whether it's a tubular lump whether it is a spherical lump or a circle so it is very important to properly learn how to examine that's why in my coaching sessions i arrange group training sessions for females of any age group and any walk of life so they can join in it is totally free so i guide them all these steps right whether she is feeling any kind of pain any lump any skin changes so there are different sessions that i conduct just to give them a clue whether this change this problem this issue is having any connection with any disease or cancer or whether it is part of the aging process same thing right if a female in her late 20s or early 20s if she starts to feel any kind of nipple discharge she is not married she is not uh, pregnant she is not breastfeeding anything nothing like that but there is a small discharge from one nipple or the both so she will be alarmed definitely devastated that it can be cancer or something like that because mm. it is not normal for her but there are many dietary items there are different medicines there are different acquired factors like improper bra use like the in different right. emotional issues different hormonal issues they can trigger the formation of secretions in the breast and the nipple that can be felt so unless she is aware that it can be linked with any non cancerous issue she will be in panic and she will not be satisfied mm-hmm. from any single doctor she will go from one to two to three doctors have multiple opinions multiple tests and all that but it will just go away in a single day if she is relaxed if she knows which food items triggered it which medication side effect it can be so it is all about knowing her own body and this is mm-hmm. the simplest thing any female can do it doesn't involve any uh, heavy cost doesn't require anyone to have multiple tests and all that so this whole process should be part of their regular education regular coaching right from the teenage so this is the whole and, thing and i wonder if you could speak more on properly fitted bras i know from experience again that it's not always easy to find a bra that fits or find more you know you might find one but you're not the same size in another brand right it's you know you have to worry about the strap size and the cup size and they don't always match and then you know you have the straps that go longer or shorter so how would a girl or a woman how do you approach that i mean in recent years and i admit it was not until my 30s that I saw a, a bra professional 
and someone who fitted me and you know the comfort level <laughs> and, and you know the appearance was remarkable it was it was certainly worth doing so any women out there who have never been fitted for a bra properly i absolutely recommend it in you know and i'm speaking from comfort but i'd love to hear doctor what you have to say about the benefits or the necessity of having a bra that fits properly actually there are three basic things any bra should provide the one thing is support because mm -hmm. the breast they are part of the body which are in a suspensory state or hanging state so all the secretions all the weight is to due to the effect of gravity is towards the lower side the drainage of the ducts the drainage of the lymphatics is away from the gravity towards the armpit area so any bra which is not providing proper support which is which impairs the normal circulation and drainage of the ducts then it will definitely give an increased risk of having congestion in the ducts blockage in the ducts and also these factors contribute towards inflammation in the ducts so one thing is any bra which is which is putting undue pressure on the breast or nipple on any part of of the breast nipple or the armpit area that is a harmful bra secondly so something too tight something too tight constricting bra okay. okay the second second thing is any bra material which is rougher on the inside because it will oh. constantly rubbing on the nipple surface secondly that if it is not even let's suppose it is not rubbing or it is only pressing on the nipple area but if that bra material it has those chemicals which ca can be carcinogenic because there are okay. bra dyes different dyes used different chemicals to treat the fabric of the bra not all are uh, you having the natural you can say fabric there are synthetic fabrics synthetic material dyes which are used to treat them to give them the shine the texture and the contour so it can be harmful yeah. thing so as long as it is having a natural as much as natural component the cotton component then it is a safer bra the third thing right. is the those females who are having a work routine or study routine for 6 to 8 hours or even more at the desk while they are sitting if their posture is not proper if their back is not supported and they are in a habit of sitting forward like this or anything so in that case all those secretions all those you can say circulation in the blood it will be pouring downwards towards due to the effect of gravity so okay. the secretions are pouring downwards blood is going downwards it is not circulating backwards the lymphatic flow and if the bra is not properly supporting and if it is a constricting type or either it is a loose type that is not providing proper support then either it will increase the congestion or it will impair the drainage in both cases it is uh, providing a damage on a constant base on daily basis for many months and years so yeah. it is very important for any female to learn the basic massages and basic exercises that promote uh, the lymphatic drainage and one uh, special aspect for those females who exercise who jog who do anything like that any physical activity sports bra should be selected after checking the bounce test so it is very important yeah. because if it is not providing the proper support it will damage the ligaments inside the breast those mm -hmm. ligaments are very small thread like structures that are holding the breast tissue any bra which is not supporting it will be either damaging the those connections those threads those ligaments and the you constant or undue use of push up bra or underwire bra it is also harmful uh, breast tissue upward it is constantly giving it a shape that is against its normal contour or texture so due to this effect this constant pushing and pulling upward effect it will detach it from the lower connections so it will promote premature sagging which no mm -hmm. younger female or any female wants to have uh, premature sagging without lactation without weight gain so all these factors have to be considered same goes for a sports bra which is not having a good bounce test it will definitely you, damage and you know i spoke about it being difficult finding a, a properly fitted bra 
And now that you've mentioned sports bras, I mean, in again, from experience, I find those can be even harder to find as, as someone who does jog. I mean, jogging, if you don't have a comfortable sports bra on, it, it is actually quite painful, but it's also not easy to to find a great sports bra. And you're right. You say about the bounce test. I mean, I know myself and my girlfriend, you go and you try on a sports bra and you kind of jump up and down because you want to make sure you're going to go for a run and it's not going to be painful. Right. So, I mean, I guess it's just again about being aware that, yeah, that hurts when you run and it's actually hurting because you're probably doing some damage to some really delicate structures. Definitely. And Mm -hmm. one more thing to consider while using any kind of bra. People, women, they are in a habit of using either the loose bra or the constricting bra. Mm-hmm. Those both are very harmful because due to any loose bra, due to respiration, the breathing effort, all the time the nipple surface is constantly rubbing on the inner surface. That is a damaging thing for the skin because it, if, a person, if a female is in a very harsh weather, cold or warm weather in both three states, the nipple skin will be damaged, cracks and infection. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a female, uh, she was 19 years old only, and for the past one month, she had breast pain, especially nipple area pain. She told her mother, friends, they all say it's part, normal part, it's a growing age and mm-hmm. all that. But she later developed 9 to 10 cc abscess in the nipple mm-hmm. area under it, just cause it was a constricting bra, it was constantly pressing on the nipple skin, damaging it, and due to excessive heat, excessive humid weather, it all led to the formation of say, of abscess. And when the pain was unbearable, then she reported, I examined her, I did the ultrasound, and then gave her the treatment and all that. So this is just one example that our teenagers, younger females, they don't have any proper person to guide them. Mm. They don't have any person to educate them. Mm. And you can understand, you know, I'm sure her family was very well-meaning, but again, their breasts do hurt when they're growing or, you know, when you're coming up into your menstrual cycle, they can get really tender and sore. So I'm sure, you know, that their fa- her family in this case was very well-meaning and you know, may have thought back into their own experience that, yeah, you know, my breasts are tender sometimes or, you know, the the changes in your body, it, the growing pains, it does happen, but it just goes to show that you know your body best. And if it's something that you're having to question, then you should definitely get checked out. And I, I just wanted to go back because you may have seen me smirk then when you said about women who like to wear either the bras that are too tight or that are too loose. And again, I'm speaking to the women in the audience. I'm, I'm sure that every one of you has your favorite bra. And it's because it's it's gone from really well fitting to being stretched out a little bit and you've worn it too much and it should probably now be in the bin. But I think a lot of us are guilty of that because it's just comfort, right? And not everyone wants to go without a bra, but you might want to feel like you don't have a bra on because again, sometimes they can be they can feel constricting, especially when you're coming up to your menstrual cycle and you're swollen, you know, and and everything's feeling a bit bigger and it's uncomfortable. So I guess this is kind of a note to all those women is to go get your bras bras checked, (laughs) look at them, make sure they're not too big and make sure they fit properly and, and seek someone out, a professional who can help you do that. But also I wanted to ask you, excuse me, what is there to be said about going braless? You know, around, particularly around the house, you get home from work and women, first thing some of us do, I'm guilty of that a lot of the times, you just take your bra off because it feels really comfortable and you want to relax. But is this damaging us? Because then gravity is taking effect, you know? The main, every female has to learn the basic concept of using a bra just to provide support and Mm -hmm. to provide the proper circulation and drainage that I've already mentioned. So okay. in that case, that scenario, they can wear any kind of loose fit, you can say regular fit bra, which is not mm-hmm. either too loose or too tight in very comfortable fabric, cotton fabric or any stretchable fabric. And they can do a couple of exercises that help in improving the circulation and drainage. So one exercise that every female can do any time of the day in a few times in, in cycles is the, like the combing effect. This thing, this helps in improving the strength of these muscles of the upper chest, 
right above those muscles which are supporting the breast tissue and all that. It also improves the circulation of the lymphatic circulation of the armpit area. So it is a very good exercise she can do on a regular basis and it will improve the strength of the muscles. It will reduce the risk of premature sagging and also mm -hmm. it will promote the lymphatic drainage. The other is she can do is like the flapping movement up and down. Okay. This and so these are arm to... movements. So moving arm your arm movement. as if you're combing your hair yes. and then flapping. Okay. Basically, these all exercises, they help to strengthen the muscles that are linked with the joint and this armpit area. Because all the lymph nodes, all the vessels, they are in this area. So we have to support these vessels, these muscles, because these muscles are basically the things that are providing strength. So when we are strengthening them, then it will reduce the congestion also. It will improve the circulation and uh, definitely it will improve the lymphatic drainage. So uh, the same thing is if a person is uh, holding and squeezing the wrist tightly and suddenly when it is uh, released, they will feel pain. For a couple of segments, there will be increased pain because all the rush in all that, the, that blood that, that will go straight inside so right. it will be painful the same thing is when they remove bra all the secretions that were either holding inside or whether they were they were not properly poured inside they will they will suddenly pour inside toward right. the effect of the gravity then it will be more painful for them so it is advisable to wear any bra that is that can be stretchable that is not too much constricting of soft mm -hmm. fabric that can provide some kind of support and also it can reduce their congestion also. So, and what about sleeping with a bra on? Definitely I've, I've is, heard mixed reviews on that and I don't know if it's personal opinion or, or what, but I've heard some women who say you definitely must and then others who say absolutely not. So what's kind of the rule around that? The rule, the simple thing is if we have, if a person is wearing a bra, and she is sleeping. She will be either sleeping on her stomach. She will be either sleeping on one side. So that part of the breast that is already constricted due to the mm. shoulder and arm and the side movement, one side will be totally pressed. So yeah. it is not a good thing. So mm. ideally, she should not sleep wearing a bra or if she is wearing, she can unhook it or she can wear that kind of uh, t-shirt type or any kind that is loose, mm. that is not constricting, that can allow the proper circulation and drainage according to her posture. So right. it is not a good thing to wear uh, a bra all the time. Uh, it is already constricting on the whole day and in the night time when it is time for the body to relax, it is in a pressure mode. So it is not a good thing. All right. Well, that's great for those of us who can't wait to get our bras off when we get home from work. <laughs> All right. So that's a lot of information. I think I've definitely learned a lot. And I wanted to ask as well, what do you have to say about breast implants? Do these have a, a severe negative effect on breast health or do they, do they not? Does it vary? And does it change the way a woman would do a breast exam? Uh, just a simple question from you. That mm. Anything that we ingest, that we apply on the skin, anything that we put inside our body, is it definitely has some kind of effect. Mm -hmm. We are drinking water, the excess of it is bad. Anything right. that we are applying on the skin, it is absorbed, it has some kind of effect on the skin texture and the deeper tissues. Same is with any kind of implant. Let's suppose science is totally, and the technology and all that, we get a material that is totally inert, it is not doing any harm to any part of the body and it is not absorbable, it does not uh, contain any kind of carcinogen or all that. Even then, we are inserting something inside the body which is occupying a space, which is put, putting some kind of pressure which was not already present on the chest wall, on the muscles. And if, let's suppose, there was a 50 gram weight on that particular area, if we suddenly put a 250 gram weight on that area, it will have some kind of effect. So yeah, certainly. It is, it is not something that I want women to avoid or totally ignore or totally stop doing. They can adopt anything that they can feel comfortable with, but they have to accept the consequences. 
we are not even sure if she may have any kind of side effect in one month, in one year or 10 mm. years. So she may not have any kind of side effect of it. So it can be a totally safe procedure, but whenever there is surgery, whenever there is some kind of mm. uh, incision, any kind of healing process that takes place, not every feeling, a healing process is ideal. Not every scar heals ideally. So right. everybody can have some kind of complication right from the surgery, from the scar, from the medication, or from the follow-up. So it all depends how much she is aware of the consequences, how much she is willing to take the risk, and how much mm. she is feeling confident after that implant. That's, if yeah. she is confident, she is happy, satisfied, and she is willing to accept all those consequences, then it is a, her decision to make. Mm. But anything yeah, and again, we do, it has some kind of consequence. Yeah. And again, it's about being, you know, body aware and, and being willing to take on that responsibility of the extra work that you may have to do when it comes to managing any sort of body modification, I suppose. Definitely. It, it all mm. depends about, it is not just you read something or you see someone or you read, you listen about someone having a great look, a great outcome. Maybe it, it is a better one for you, but it can have a side effect. It can go south for you. So you have to be aware. You have to consider all those aspects and take an informed decision. Yeah, that's right. And again, it's about that relationship with your doctors or in that case, your surgeon and making sure they're giving you the correct information and that you understand the information that they're sharing with you. Definitely. Hmm. And I wanted to ask, you mentioned that you'd offer, I don't know if you call them programs or courses where you assist women or you have women in doing their breast exam and learning how to do these things. And correct me if I've understood that wrong, but are these done online? Because if so, it's something that I'd love to share if, if it's available. I know you mentioned it's free. Uh, yes, there are uh, mainly at this moment, till this moment, for about, you can say, I've initiated my organization for about one year or more. And I've been doing these sessions for three or four months. These are all Zoom sessions. Uh, it is basic information regarding any topic. Like the last time I did, it was about skin changes in the breast and nipples. So I, I educate and guide them about how to examine breast and nipples, visual examination, same tips, the mm -hmm. basic method of it. And later I told through with the help of slides and all that, which changes are normal and which are abnormal which are warning signs and which uh, signs and symptoms should be cared for to reduce their intensity and severity. So these are all online sessions, Zoom sessions. So I conduct them on a regular basis depending on the schedule and depending on the topic. And especially I volunteer in different Facebook groups uh, regarding mm -hmm. breast health, breast cancer. So I get many questions and queries on a regular basis. So I try to address those questions weekly basis or after every two weeks which are frequent. So I try mm -hmm. to formulate a session based on those inquiries and give them those tips and methods which can be helpful for them. So it was uh, one was about breast pain, what was one was about breast development, either it is according to age, either it is complete, factors which may affect or reduce or increase breast development and all that. One was about self breast awareness, about which food items to take, which skincare products are good, which are bad, or environmental factors, emotional health issues, sexual hormonal effects and all that. So there are different aspects to breast health, not just the breast tissue that is visible, but there are other health issues that directly or indirectly affect the breast health. So all these, these are discussed. Perfect. And so what I'll do for anyone who's listening, I'll get some links off of you after we have this conversation and I'll share those in the description of the video for anyone who's wanting to explore that further. And then I'd also just like to confirm, I know that you're in Pakistan and I just wanted to check, are the resources that you do share, are they also available in English? Yes, they are. Uh, Perfect, my website, yeah. webreastaware.org. It is in two languages, English and Urdu, my local area language. So it is totally free. It is a complete information resource. It has all the information regarding breast health, breast cancer, screening and disease process, testing and all that. Everything is there. It is totally free for everyone. Everyone can, anyone can access it. They can see all the information is totally free for everyone. 
Perfect. I'll share that as well. And I hope, excuse me, I hope anyone listening found this valuable today. I certainly did. I did learn some things that I I didn't know. And it it just, it's, it's made me rethink some of the choices, including, you know, whether how often I do or don't wear my bra and how often I actually replace them. So I thank you for that. And as I mentioned, I'll share all the links in the recording. And I just hope that all of you listening, you know, women or men, that this kind of sparks a conversation and it helps you to feel more comfortable in talking about those close to you about your breast health, regardless of how young or old you are, it's never too late to start. So I definitely encourage all of you to jump on board, check out the website. Again, I'll share it in the description and just reach out if you have any further questions or if you feel like you have a question that we might've missed today. So I want to thank you, Dr. Jawad, for joining me today. It's been incredibly valuable and I'm sure that many people will gain a lot from this episode. And if you enjoyed the episode today, make sure you like, subscribe, and you continue to follow along for more holistic health modalities, tips, and techniques. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thanks for joining me on the Holistic Health Show. If you enjoyed the episode, subscribe now and get ready to embark on an incredible journey toward holistic wellness. Until next time, be well and stay holistic.